Hello, are you out there? I'm Mark with Homebrew Beer Dream. Problem player, Jeff's Escapade. Let's hope this is good. I don't know who Jeff is. This is coming from Blue Penguin. So, PPJ, here's three stories involving a guy that we warn new and old players of D&D about. Because, oh boy, it was a doozy of a time. I'll just dive straight in. Hopefully it all makes sense. I hope so as well. We all do. We are, we're introduced to him at the time... He was the boyfriend of one of our friends for a campaign that had a bunch of new players starting. The DM at the time was a first-time DM and wanted my partner and I to be the veteran players to assist in learning the rules and such. Good to have a little backup if you're starting with new folks. PBJ picked to play a paladin. Okay, fair enough. Paladin of Aphrodite? Okay, cool. Things were going fine for a while until one of us female PCs needed healing. Wow. I'm already I'm already getting nervous, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> oh no. I already saw the word boobs in there. <laughs> what's gonna what's in the box? <laughs> PPJ used lay on hands and groped the boobs of the girl he was healing at the time. I in game, not IRL. Uh that was when we probably should have said something straight off the bah, TBH, but hey, we were all thinking of the dude having character development at some point. Game carried on. Happy as Larry, my character, Bard, started to romance another player member, a Dragonborn. It also had a bit of a turmoil in the relationship due to my character being called a name by the Dragonborn and then went off with the paladin because my bard was understandably hurt, and paladin was purely a rebound. Yeah, classic. You always rebound with the paladin, folks. Always. Uh, paladin basically rubbed it in the dragonborn's face that my bard was with them now, thinking it would bother them. It got old very fast. At one point, PBJ bitched about how he wouldn't be there for one of the games. My group has this rule that if most of the players are there, we play. That's actually a really good rule. My partner and I couldn't go one week. The game carried on. We got updated next game, but as soon as this guy wasn't available for one week, he expected it to be postponed for him. Expectations, you just throw those out the door. You just say, nah, we're not going to postpone, man. We carry on. Them's the rules. This is one of the campaigns where we had issues with him. Currently, this game is on hiatus due to the DM being busy with other things. I feel like a wall of text per campaign might be the best idea. Okay, that's not a bad idea. If your DM's out, you just, you know, text back and forth to each other to, like, kind of keep a little flavor going. That's not a bad idea. PPJ 2, Electric Boogaloo. My partner decided to run a game. All the people from the last campaign joined, including PPJ. He and I made bards mine lore his valor. My character also had a twin sister. We also had another person who was basically a family member of mine and my character's twin. This is relevant later. Okay, so it's a lot of family tree stuff. I'm not even trying to track it. It's too much. My bard was a tiefling for this game. Her name is Pixie. Things were, again, okay at first, until he decided to have his character begin flirting with every female character in the party. After a while, my character's twin began a romance with another party member, funnily enough, a paladin. It's not funny. It makes total sense if you think about it. I have my character draw dicks with fairy wings. I call them Dixie. <laughs> oh. Whenever she visits places... PPJ basically stole my little gimmick by having his bard have a shit ton of pictures of his dick that was artistically drawn and randomly handing them out to people after signing them. It ruined some of the fun for me, understandably. Yeah, that's way less cool. You don't rip off someone else's gimmick. In the, oh, oh, man. Uh, are you guys, like, 16? It doesn't seem like you guys are 16, but that seems like a very, like... I saw this on the cover of a magazine. Now that's my hair too. <laughs> you know, it's so... Ooh. He did eventually stop that when I told him how it was making me feel. Uh, 
He also often bragged about how his bard was more useful than mine in regards to bardic inspiration. So I had semi-in-character jabs at him. He used an insult generator on his phone to, for vicious mockery, and it often made no sense and took forever to get them out. <laughs> get them out. He's like, hold on, hold on. It's, uh, it's loading now. It's building the phrase. Yeah. <laughs> 80%. 82%. It's almost done. <laughs> Yeah, you don't need to provide what you're saying with vicious mockery every time. You do it once or twice every now and again for flavor. You work them out in advance in your own time at home. You know, you're like sitting there, you know, taking a shower. You're like, oh, <laughs> this would be a great vicious mockery. I'm gonna throw that in the next session. But don't be like, you got, you don't got to come up with it on the spot, folks. You don't need a phone for it. Ah, uh, let's see here. <laughs> so, here was where I. Proved to be the wittier bard player in it seems. Uh, did I mention that his bard was based on Jassiker of the Witcher, but only on the unlikable traits of him? Ouch. Burn. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> PBJ tried to have his character flirt with Pixie, my bard, and it didn't work. Me and the other player that I mentioned was relevant later just gave each other a look and decided to prevent him from trying to get with my character by having a romance done with that player, a rogue. PPJ often made comments saying that my character was the other character's sister. It was the dynamic we had before we decided to have them be in a relationship. Rela this is, again, this is just like, I can't follow it can't follow it, man. Outside of the game, he made people uncomfortable via some comments and constantly repeating jokes until someone reacted. Not exactly my place to say some of the stuff that made folks uncomfortable. That's nice of you. Listen, I make bad dad jokes all the time. I don't expect people to laugh all the time, though. I laugh inside and sometimes externally, but I get that it's not very funny. I get that. He also wanted us to record our sessions for his uni work and wanted us all to throw names out for his project as we were a team. His words. We all threw out ideas until we decided on one of my suggestions. Also, me being a nice-ass person that I try to be at times, offered to do a logo for him for free as a gift. So I got to work. That's very generous of you. If you're an artist or something, that's really cool. Not even two days later, he said that he was wanting to go with the previous name he had and asked me to adjust his current logo. It felt like a huge slap in the face to everyone. I almost finished with the logo when this happened, so I felt like my time was wasted. As soon as he said that, I was like, fuck it, I'm keeping this logo and shit. Okay, said what? He almost finished with the logo when, when this happened. O okay. Yeah, I think you would just... Yes, it's, that was weirdly ordered in the order of the ideas there. But yeah, if if you're just trying to be generous, he's, ask, he's asking for the friends group to help. They pitch in, they put in their time, their creativity. They're like, yeah, here you go. And then he's just like, nah, not that. I'm going another way. And you're just like, dude. Mmm. Mmm. Because not only is it rude to the people you're asking to help. Here, I'll, I'll move on with this real quick. But... It's presuming that your creativity is bigger slash better than the rest of that group. It's like, yeah, the four of you who were thinking over this and like powwow and brainstorming. Now, I just came up with something on my own that this is superior to all of yours. That's mighty biggins in the britches. You know what I'm saying? Okay, we'll move on here. Uh, my partner, the DM, had a bunch of us go to him saying that what PPJ was doing was making a bunch of us uncomfortable. Uh, so DM asked PPJ to step out of the game for a while while everything was sorted. The other DM we had for the third campaign, which I'll write about next time, about next was the same. Cue PPJ harassing both DMs constantly asking who said what, yada, yada, yada. It was bothering my partner so much that he got irritable, and I almost wanted to go into PPJ's messages and bitch at him to stop harassing my partner and such understandable poster, but you don't need to do that. Your partner needs to block or silence PPJ if they don't want the harassment. You know, everyone has that ability on social media, just you can always re-enable that later, but if you need a break for a week, a month, then, then they need to take that initiative or suggest it to your partner. 
but don't get into the the tisk for tat. I mean, in this in this whole thing, there's a couple times where it sounds like, uh, you know, one person was doing something, and then another person kind of bit back. That just it's understandable. I completely get like sometimes the the idea that you're gonna bark back at the dog that's barking at you. Right, bad metaphor, but. It, it it just adds to the problem. It never helps. You never put someone in their place so much that they're like, oh, oh, I was I will I'll change my behavior. I'll I will now be the bigger person, and and I've learned my lesson about being annoying and not understanding social cues well. No, biting back, barking back doesn't help. You you got to take the high 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 road. By all means, correct someone, but do it in a correct way. Where it's like, hey, this behavior's been happening it's making the other folks uncomfortable. It's not really appropriate at the table. Could you please curtail that if you don't mind? Like, that's how you be the bigger... That's how you have that conversation to, to adjust behavior. But just like, so, if someone's like, snark, 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 and then you're like, snark, snark, it's never going to go well. So if someone's like all blowing up messages, send, 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 and he's like, why, who, what, when am I going to get... It's not fair. And then you're just like all... Bitch, you need to chill that shit out. Click, click, send, you know, like, don't. There are other ways to handle it. Okay. Time in here. Okay. Dude got so butthurt that he eventually had to be banned from both games. Ouch. I am sorry it came to that. It, that but, but yes, if it has to, it has to. Okay. Though before this campaign started, I did show him a picture of my bard after I designed her, and his immediate response was to ask if I would do NSFW artwork for her. Since he got kicked from our games, I have done spite. <laughs> NS. FW of Pixie. I take back everything I said about not uh, biting back. Uh, I think we're all interested in, in how your your, your response, um, not suitable for work, uh, artwork responses are going. Please share on Reddit. <laughs> Intense. PBJ3. We're almost free. The third DM's campaign. Admittedly, I didn't join this one for a while, but after several sessions, I joined with the cleric. Nice. TBH, I don't know what he was like before I joined, but funnily enough, he was decent for a good chunk of the game when I joined. No flirting for a while. Then he made a new character. Originally, they were going to be a male until an NPC strictly made to be my character's love interest. The DM said as much several months after the game. Uh, came into the scene and was a literal hunk, like hubba hubba kind of hunk. It was off the bat flirting with my cleric. Then suddenly, PPJ's character, an elf rogue, was a woman. What do you mean, like, just, like, just erase, rechecked, you know, erase male, <laughs> check female, like, instant change? Uh, it's unusual. And then, and then what happened, though? We're all wondering what happened after he did that, after he switches his elf rogue from a male to female. Then what happened? We We can't see what's coming. The train... Through the tunnel, yeah, right. The light in the distance, the sound of the horn. Uh, uh. Um, he played her like she was a child and tried to have her cling to this PC all the time he was around. To put it bluntly, it was creepy as fuck. I was creeped out. The DM was creeped out. It was nuts. Wow, this is long. Oh, this is long. Okay. Uh, so I'm gonna call a time out there. Yeah. So this person. PPJ is is just socially awkward, right? I know, like I'm trying to. <laughs> we all get it. We all get it. But yeah, this isn't going to change. I mean, uh, essentially, PPJ wants to have social connections with people IRL, but does not know how to go about them in an appropriate, uh, safe healthy way they simply don't know how to this is probably just something that maybe their own you know biology their own brain setup doesn't allow them to read those cues like other people so in that sense i don't want to just say that this person's just choosing to do all this maybe they are maybe they are 
But oftentimes, you know, we all meet those people where it's just like, oh, you don't understand social norms, you know, where, where everyone will be bantering. You're, you're out at a bar or a party and everyone's kind of making jokes and quipping. It's lighthearted and everyone's getting along. And then that one person just comes in and says, but the KKK should have right. And you, 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 it's, you know, I'm just making an extreme example. And everyone's just like, everyone's just like, uh, whoa, where did that come from, right? And, and not just, you know, like everyone, everyone in the circle is just going like, what did this person just do? Like they just threw a bomb and everyone's just like, whoa. Um, and that happens with jokes. That happens with um, like, I'll say bragging, but talking up, you know, you're saying, oh, you know, I, yeah, I just got my degree in this, or I just got this promotion at work. And then this other person just comes barreling in from the side and just like, I did this and this, you know, or I know of someone who did even more than that. And you're just like, oh, okay, well, thanks for stealing the thunder there. Or romantically, you're, you know, again, in that party situation, you know, people are casually, you know, flirting, you know, just talking and stuff, but, you know, smiling a little, you know, laughing, you know, you know, the chemistry's there. They understand chemistry. They're feeling the chemistry of making those connections. And then this person just comes in and, like, pats the person on the ass next to them. You know, physical, un unwanted contact with the person who they're not. And, and everyone's just like, uh, did you just put your hands on this person, right? Because if you've lived long enough, you know, you're going to see that. You're going to see that in a workplace. You're going to see that at school. You're going to see this in social environments where it's just like that person... It's not an excuse, but, like, they just don't read. They see everyone else doing this, like, making jokes, making, you know, casual, you know, brags, making casual flirting, and they don't see the line between, like, yeah, this is how humanity gets to know each other and, and does all these dynamics. This is normal. This is fun. It's appreciated. It's generally wanted, all these different types of things. But then they there's that definite line, and they just go over it because they can't emotionally, socially, see the gradations there. So it sounds a lot like that's what's going on here. I mean, the whole idea that um, PPJ on this elf rogue in the past had been more, like, blunt about, like, the, the romantic you know, advances within the game. But this time they're saying, like, no, I'm going to make a, a child character who gets to be physically clingy. And it is creepy, but it's their way of, like, going about it another way. It's like, well, I'll just glom on you and you won't mind. You'll think it's cute. And vis-a-vis, -vis, you'll think that it, it'll improve our IRL relationship in that way if you're not afraid of the idea of, like, hugging and grabbing on the legs and you know it's like how you know like when you got like a two-year-old and they all like you know climb on you you know on you and stuff and you're like oh okay okay and, you know they're cute little kids so you know you're gonna give them that hug you're gonna oh all right buddy yeah and you know you set them down but they always want to you know keep coming back you know climbing up on you and shit like that but i i got four kids so i've been through it all <laughs> but um yeah that's what they're doing though and, and you guys all recognize it though is it it's just a really weird this is getting long. <sighs> yeah. It's creepy, but I think it's honestly, it's just a, a peer that doesn't work for PPJ. If I had a guess, really, based on what you're describing. Yeah, I'll call a time in. Let's try and get through this. This is super long. I, I don't really care. Uh, every time I try to have my cleric have a conversation with the NPC, PPJ's character was there ruining my character's time in the spotlight and such. It got to the point that my NPC had to use Wish to get the entire party to forget he existed, which also meant my cleric, much to the, deep, the, the NPC's dismay. Wow, that's extreme. Okay, fun fact, PPJ doesn't like people playing children. This is important. Oh my gosh. But their Illifrog behaves like a child, but n not a child. Okay. So after we basically save the world with wob wobbly wobbly, you mean timey wimey stuff? Wobbly wobbly? With, isn't it wibbly wobbly timey wimey stuff? I, I don't mean to be pedantic here, but... All right. I, I'll, I'll keep reading the post. I'm not just going to rage quit right now, but I thought it was wibbly wobbly timey wimey stuff. I, I, I'm sorry. I'll... I'll just let it slide this one time. My character was getting married to another PC, also a rogue. So the party is planning this wedding, as you do, and the PPJ's character and the other rogue go to get suits for him and his best man along with wedding rings. P 
PBTA decided to derail the session by having his character be obsessed over the NPC that no longer exists. Do the timey-wimey stuff we had to do for almost an hour. I had to say rather loudly, I was beginning to get bored of this moment. We finally carried on with the wedding. After the wedding and all the PCs had retired to their ver for their various reasons, we started session two of the campaign. Okay, DM's GF decided to be a little shit and play a child character, strictly to annoy PPJ. PPJ's character for this part of the campaign, Bargain Bin Android 16 Warforged. <laughs> nice. Android 16, yeah. DM's GF plan to annoy PPJ worked. He was annoyed. So he stepped away claiming that he didn't, we didn't make him feel welcome to the group. Yeah, it was bound to happen that you guys were going to push him out because he wasn't, he wasn't going to be able to change. So I don't know that you guys handled that perfectly, to be really honest. Probably should have like been like a group decision or the DM just saying, sir, we need you to leave. You're not welcome. I apologize. We just had many issues and good luck to you. That's how you do it. But you guys kind of were, you know, passive-aggressive-aggressive-aggressive. Uh, Proactive-aggressive. Uh, proactive <laughs> but he wasn't going to be able to fix himself because, again, it's up here for, for, that, for PPJ. So we stepped away, so he stepped away claiming that we didn't make him feel welcome to the group. Though, PPJ did commission me to draw his suddenly female character. He even haggled to get a variation at a lower price than I was offering. So that's the thing. Just going to say right there, OP, you should just sever that tie with PPJ. It doesn't sound like it's a real healthy interaction there, to be quite honest. Um, you got to be honest about how you feel about this person. Just, you know, based off how you're expressing it, I would make a clean cut. Both, in, you know, the in-game world, at the table, IRL, outside of the table, all the places. His GF, who became XGF during all this shit, was really surprised that I actually got paid to do the commission. So there's the escapades of problem player Jeff. Oh, that's what PBJ means. Ah, shit. I just got that. I wish you'd put that at the beginning. TLDR. Problem player Jeff means PPGJ. So, there you go. Hey, if you got through all this, uh, thank you. OP, thank you. It was, it was great. I really enjoyed that. So, um, I'll, I'll send you a little DM of this.